What's going on everyone? So the Los Angeles Lakers are trying to acquire DeMar DeRozan and it looks like they are trying to acquire him via a trade uh, and more likely than not it's going to be a three-team deal. Now the best course of action of course would be to just sign him with the mid-level exception right that way you kind of clear that get that out the way and then you can use your assets to go and make a trade for various pieces to upgrade right the lakers i don't believe are far from being in contention with these other teams but i do think that even like just demar Derozan won't be enough i think that they need at least you know two to maybe three really quality core pieces to really elevate this team and take them to the next step so i'm all for a trade even if it is for demar Derozan and they do work that trade out uh I'm okay with that depending on what the cost is in order to acquire him, right? If it's something like Clay, where, you know, it's just kind of, you know, one guy's going to D'Lo, right? It's going to one team and then, you know, you're sending picks, second round picks or something to uh, a team like the Chicago Bulls and you're landing DeMar, fine, so be it. You, if you can make it work, I'm with that. Uh, and then you'd still have your mid-level exception. Maybe go get a Miles Bridges um, or, you know, maybe if you need a point guard, Tyus Jones, something like that, and then go make a trade for a center and another piece. But the Lakers currently, as far as the trade partners go, appear to be the Chicago Bulls, the Los Angeles Lakers, and the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets still really want D'Lo. Um, it's been reported from uh, Anthony Irwin, as well as uh, Jake Fisher have both basically said that, hey, look, they were linked to D'Lo at the trade deadline. They are still linked to him now, and they want to unload several pieces. They kind of need that playmaker, that point guard. Also, D'Lo and his expiring contract I could go a long way uh, for a team like the Brooklyn Nets. They're kind of hitting the reset button. They want to move off of like Cam Johnson, Dorian Finney-Smith, uh, Ben Simmons, right? They want to start unloading and getting rid of guys to, one, kind of hit the bottom, but also, you know, kind of see, okay, what about this young guy? What about that young guy? And then can D'Lo kind be the piece that if it works you can keep and kind of have him be your point guard going forward if it doesn't then it's no big deal you kind of just let him walk and you clear more money off of your books so this could be a good advantage for the lakers obviously you get demar Derozan, but with the brooklyn nets and having several pieces that make a lot of sense for the lakers you could kind of kill two birds with one stone Obviously, again, it depends on what you're giving up in the process to acquire these pieces. But if you could get, say, DeMar DeRozan and in a perfect world get a Cam Johnson and, you know, you're kind of working it out to maybe Rui's going to Chicago and then, you know, D'Lo's going over to the Brooklyn Nets and, you know, they're they're kind of configuring it to, to make the, the structure work so everything lines up perfectly. Lakers are kind of upgrading. Yes, you can argue Rui may be better than Cam Johnson, but Cam Johnson is the better fit at the three spot, right? Because Rui is best at the four. Can't really defend threes, right? He's great offensively. It's not a coincidence that every time LeBron is out of a game and Rui gets to step up and play the four, he ends up showing up and is great. His rebounding's better, everything. But as long as LeBron's on this team, he's never really going to naturally be able to play the four because that's LeBron's position at this point and where he's best slotted with his age and kind of, you know, inabilities to, to have that constant motor game in and game out, right? So more likely than not, Rui is kind of almost having to be traded by default. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to do it in this Brooklyn deal or, you know, the three-way between Chicago and Brooklyn, but it is something, if you can get a legitimate starting three, somebody like a Cam Johnson who makes sense and can knock down the three ball with efficiency, you know, 39 to 40% from three-point range. Uh, also, he can put the ball on the floor, create, uh, make shots for himself, make shots for others also slot in a DeMar DeRozan, now all of a sudden you're cooking there, right? Now you got two of like the big pieces that you need. At that point, now you're just looking for probably a backup point guard and you're looking for a backup center and let's go compete, right? Because at that point you could probably go Austin Reeves, DeMar DeRozan, although I'm not super confident in that backcourt, right? Like defensively, although DeMar, he can be serviceable. Reeves can be serviceable at times, but I do have concerns with that. I'd almost prefer the Lakers kind of go get a point of attack. In a perfect world, 
you go and trade for uh, DeMar DeRozan, you also get Cam Johnson, and then you go and sign with your mid-level exception, go get a guy like a Miles Bridges, and then at that point kind of go positionless, right? Where, yes, you have you could slot LeBron at the point, but really he's the four, and you basically have like Bridges, D'Lo, and uh, Johnson as your perimeter uh, defenders on the defensive side, and then LeBron is kind of operating. And DeMar DeRozan's a guy who has shown he can initiate an offense. And the way that J.J. Redick wants to kind of structure his offense is this free-flowing, you know, balls constantly moving. You know, it's not this just iso-heavy point guard. You know, LeBron's dominating the basketball and making plays. But you'd always have LeBron that you could default to if you needed to do that, right? So you could have, again, DeMar and have, a, a you know, a Cam Johnson go get a Miles Bridges, or even Dorian Finney-Smith. Can you kind of work it all out to where you get Dorian Finney-Smith and you get, um, you know, Cam Johnson in a deal, and now you just go with those two, and then now you're bringing Reeves off the bench? I don't hate that idea, right? And again, I'd still kind of like a point guard because I just don't think Reeves is ready to operate as the point guard. But if you can get, say, a Dorian Finney-Smith and a Cam Johnson, well, then maybe you're using that mid-level exception to go get Tyus Jones, and you're bringing Tyus Jones off the bench. Or you could even start start him as that like playmaker, 3 and D style guard. Um, defensively, he's not great or hasn't been great, but I, I would prefer him more in that backup role. And then now you have him, Austin Reeves, uh, you know, Max Christie, if you can keep Jared Vanderbilt, Jared Vanderbilt, uh, Christian Wood, and then you got to just go get that backup center, whoever that is, right? Depending on what you have to give up in the cost of stuff, right? maybe you can. You know, I'd like to keep Jared Vanderbilt personally, but if you get Dorian Finney-Smith and like a Cam Johnson, or if you get a Miles Bridges and a, and a Cam Johnson, then Vanderbilt kind of becomes expendable, so I think you can kind of get away with trading Vanderbilt, especially if you can go get a backup center, right? Can you go get like a Nick Richards? So I know it's frustrating right now, right? I'm frustrated. You're frustrated. Everyone's frustrated. We're kind of waiting for that first domino to fall. I would have loved Clay, right? Would Clay have came in and just changed the landscape for the Lakers? Probably not, right? DeMar is the better player. There are concerns about the fit. I'm not so worried about the fit. I've kind of touched on it and broke it down. If we get DeMar DeRozan, I'll like really break it down uh, and kind of go over all the ins and outs, the good, the bad, the ugly. But I, I, I'm not really so much concerned with DeMar because I do think his skill set is very valuable. I know people have the concerns he doesn't shoot the three ball, but there's more to floor spacing than just shooting threes. And he does take a lot of very deep twos that are essentially borderline threes. To me, it's what else are you getting beyond DeMar DeRozan, right? I want DeMar. I'm all for DeMar. DeMar is better at this stage than Klay Thompson, right? So if you can get DeMar, that's better than going and getting Klay Thompson, especially if you can get DeMar for, you know, basically D'Lo's salary. Like if you just swap in D'Lo's salary with DeMar DeRozan, that's massive for the Lakers at that point because then you still have Gabe Vincent, Rui Hachimura, Jared Vanderbilt. You still have these guys that you can look to trade and unload to, again, go get a, a Cam Johnson or get a Cam Johnson and a Dorian Finney-Smith. Right? And on top of that, you could go and maybe make a move to go get that backup center. And now you really rounded out your roster. Now, at that point, you know, again, if you have a roster of just say Dorian Finney Smith, Cam Johnson, DeMar DeRozan, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis, you got size, you got versatility, you got switchability. You can basically switch with all five guys if you need to. Yeah, I mean, your smallest guy on the court at that point would be what, like DeMar DeRozan? And he's got good size. So to me, it's like if you can put something like that together for this roster, for this team, I just think that that would be very valuable. And it appears that a three team trade is the more likely route that we're heading in. They're all kind of trying to work it out. They're all trying to figure it out. And if they can get that done, it is difficult, right? Obviously, I'm hoping while you're watching this video, we get the news and we get the announcement. But realistically, it's probably going to take a little time because it's hard enough to do one trade, right? One for one. 
It's another thing when you're adding that third party in because they want things that are specific. You know, you want this and they want that. And then, okay, all right, fine, all parties agree. And then you know, you're getting ready to file the paperwork. And then it's like, ah, you know, you know what? I feel like I'm, you know, I feel like I need a little more or whatever. And it just all of a sudden you're starting from scratch, right? So it may be a little bit of a process, but I really do think DeMar DeRozan is going to end up being a Laker. I think one way or another, I think push comes to shove, worst case, I do think DeMar will just sign for that mid-level exception. Um, I don't think he'll sign long-term for that mid-level exception, but I think, and I could see him kind of just going, all right, I'll take it for a year just so I could play with the Lakers, you know, see what we can do, see what we can cook up. Lakers go make trades for other things and then kind of run it and see what that turns out to be and, and what you can create with that. But I really, I just, again, based on the information that we have, all signs are pointing to DeMar's going to be a Laker one way or another. The market isn't this vast market for him, right? There's not a lot of teams that are lining up to go and pay him all this money. And, you know, it's like, you know, maybe a, a team like the Spurs, maybe they'd give him 20 million or something. But it's like, do I really want to do that? When I can go to the Lakers and I can contend and compete and I can play, you know, is he going to go to Detroit for all that money? Probably not. I right? like it just to me, it makes sense that, you know, he would go and, and be acquired for that mid-level exception at worst. But ideally, the Lakers are going to try to trade for him. If you're just essentially swapping D'Lo for him, then to me, that's a home run. But can you get other pieces along with it while you're there? Right? Can you get a Cam Johnson ideally? I wouldn't even hate. Can you get a, you know, Dayron Sharp? Can you get a, a Cam Thomas? Right? Can you get some of these pieces from the Brooklyn Nets beyond just, you know, Cam Johnson? Right? If you could basically flip and, and swap three of your guys for three or four of theirs, then now you're in business, right? Also, if you can unload an extra guy, another option for like, point guard would be just to bring back Spencer Dinwiddie and actually allow him to play the point guard, something that uh, you saw Darvin Ham not allow him to do, which was incredibly frustrating. So I wouldn't even hate kind of going with him and letting him kind of be the, the main backup point guard and maybe slotting him with Reeves and Christie and, you know, Christian Wood and then go get a center, whoever that center is. Um, that would be ideal. But Anyway, as always, this is a discussion. I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Are you excited that this potentially could end up happening? Uh, what pieces do you want from the Brooklyn Nets? Is there any other pieces that you want from the Chicago Bulls? Um, how do you feel? Whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.